And welcome to Friday night. It is Carcon Carney. I'm James Van Osdell. And here's the thing. By the time I get to Friday, it doesn't matter what week it is, although this week feels especially so. I'm just beat. I, I, I'm done. I'm toast. I, I don't want anything challenging to come my way, uh, which is why I think Friday night. Here's the thing. By the time I get to Friday, it doesn't matter. My guest is getting a little excited there. Um, we're hearing we're hearing me on delay. Can you kill the volume on your Facebook for fuck's sake? Thank you. It's killed. It's killed. So what I was saying was, by the time I get to Friday, I just want life to be easy. And so with that, I have a guest tonight uh, who, who brings me great comfort. And we'll get to him again in a second. But first, I should mention Carcon Carne, sponsored by C&H Financial Services. Business owners are dealing with the new realities brought on by coronavirus, and C&H Financial Services is here to help. They offer a variety of products, ranging from traditional merchant accounts to a zero-cost payment processing solution, which eliminates the expense associated with accepting Visa, MasterCard, Discover, and American Express, as a form of customer payment. CNH Financial Services eTab solution is easy to set up for your business for online ordering and curbside pickup. They also offer cost-effective commercial lending programs, which can help get your business the money it needs to make it through these unprecedented times. To learn more, contact CNH Financial Services at 855-600-2437 or go to chfs.us. So I, I was saying, by the time I get to Friday, I'm done, I'm spent. I just need things to, I, I need one for the win column. Uh, this right here, here's one for the win column. It's Dennis Buckley from 88 Fingers Louie, an old friend. Uh, happy Friday, Dennis. Happy Friday, everybody. Uh, Dennis Buckley, also a music fan. He's got his Waco Brothers hat, and he's got his Black Sabbath-esque Black Lives Matter shirt. That looks great. Right. Yeah, I love it. I love that they did that. So in, in the Facebook Live text or the post, Dennis, I wrote that music curation is a lost art. It's hard to cut through the crap and find stuff worth listening to. My friend Dennis Buckley, that's you, uh, has evolved into a fantastically reliable curator and is rolling through some of his favorite recent music releases. And that's the premise. Yeah, I've talked to you a million times before on this podcast about punk rock, about 88 Fingers Louie, about Chicago, whatever. Following you on social media is a trip because you're always sharing music and it's not all punk rock it's not what people would expect from the dude from 88 fingers louis you have a very wide eclectic and i think great taste for music so one of the ongoing issues that i wrestle with and that i've mentioned on the show is that these days with the internet being what it is it's hard to know where to find new music yeah where to find the good stuff we live in a world where everything is available any band you want to listen to is out there but sometimes you don't even know where to start especially so with new, newer music and especially so i think as people get up there in age once they get past like 35 years old maybe have a family have kids it's harder and harder to drill through and find new music which is why i think music cur curation is so important and again it's hard to come by and i thought you're a fine curator i want to know i want to know what you're listening to these days so you come to this podcast tonight armed with some new releases that you are loving and you're going to Tell us why and what what what's moving you and what what we should be checking out. And that, that's the whole premise. It's New Music Friday, so to speak. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I, I uh, what, what, what it's what a time to listen to music when there's nothing <laughs> you can't really do much else. You know, hey, it's funny. A lot of bands I have talked to during the pandemic will say, yeah, we've got we're sitting on new music. We don't know if we should put it out now or wait until we can start gigging again. Right. Fuck it. Put it out now. We're all starved for content. We're ready yeah. to consume. Yeah. Get it, get it in our ears. Well, now. it's like it's like, uh, and we talked about this probably in another podcast. Uh, at the start of the pandemic, you would start hearing about um, bands that were, you know, they had an album on the release schedule. They're like, oh, we're gonna yank it because of COVID. I'm like, no, why would you? Why would you yank it? People have right. like this. I think it was wasn't it the psychedelic furs that that record that new record's so great, but they they put like a three month or four month delay on it. And there's a song on that album. Uh, it may, may, maybe it was a single. It was the uh, the boy or the man who invented rock and roll. Yes, yes. Oh my God! What a great I, song. I could just picture that as a show opener. Just sonically, it just it, it is a fantastic, timeless psychedelic first song. That that record, uh, which which wasn't planned. I didn't plan on that being one of the ones to talk about. But now that we're talking about it, uh, you know, I I was the fairest of fair weather psychedelic first uh, fans. I should say of their music. Uh, you know, I was familiar with, 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 with Pretty in Pink and Love My Way and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, they had that, that lead off single, uh, Don't, Be Don't Believe from this new album. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this, this actually sounds kind of, 
kind of dark and not John Hughes sounding. Oh, they were always, I mean, that first album is dark as anything. I, I would say uh, the self-titled album and Talk, 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 especially, yeah. are wonderful. I mean, I, I remember buying those as a kid. I mean, uh, Sister Europe uh, is just tremendous and yeah. Mr. Mr. Jones and all that early stuff with the saxophone too and Richard mm -hmm. Butler's cool gravelly voice I digress so <laughs> you are you're a music curator of sorts I, I guess the question is as a, a dyed in the wool punk rock dude mm -hmm. how, how do you expose yourself how do you get exposed to music as we're asking you to expose others what where, where do you get yeah. do you, is it word of mouth is it do you look at different websites do you uh, I would say in 2020, it's, it's word of mouth. I've got a, I definitely have a few friends of mine. Um, they're uh, a lot more plugged into newer music than I am. And I kind of rely on them for, um, some, some hints. Um, but then I'll also, um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, particularly the UK music magazines that maybe don't have print, um, versions anymore, like uncut or well i guess uncut is still mm -hmm. in print but like i think it's like 15 bucks at barnes and noble yeah exactly and, and now they don't sell them at barnes and noble anymore so <laughs> well the, the british there are two british magazines i like they're not exact the music they cover isn't isn't exactly like cutting edge cool indie stuff but yeah. i love classic rock magazine that's one of them yep oh my god i look for i i buy it online every month it's like 3.99 on, on my kindle yeah. uh i love that magazine and metal hammer which is a sister publication Oh, they're, oh, I didn't know that they were related. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I love both those, but those British mags are fantastic. I would, I, 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 one of my favorite things to do pre, pre COVID, and I'm, and it's probably been a couple of years since I had the chance to do it, but I would take a Sunday, like a half of a day Sunday. When I say half a day, I'm talking, you know, a good four or five hours where I would, I would, uh, go out to local Barnes and Noble. I'd, uh, I'd sit down with a mocha, um, and, I'd be in there two, two and a half hours just looking at magazines. And then I would, because I'm, I'm such a nerd about music, I literally, I would literally, uh, the note app on my phone, I'd be like, okay, um, I just read about this band. Um, they've been compared so to that. So, and I thought, and I honestly, I feel like, you know, you know, guy in his mid forties, I felt like I was 20 years younger, like, you know, like fanboying out to all this crap. And then, um, you know, in the days where, you know, I only had an iPod Nano that could fit, <laughs> 12 albums if you're lucky yeah. like like okay i got i gotta let go of this uh you know beach boys pet sounds is gonna have to take a break for uh for yeah it'll always it'll always be there for you yeah exactly. it's it's funny you should say that because when i go through those magazines I, I do most of my reading right before i go to bed i don't i don't watch anything before i go to sleep i find mm -hmm. it just keeps me awake um so i'll read a lot of these music magazines like classic rock or whatever right before bedtime yeah and i realize as i read them i'm like shit i need to write this stuff down or i need to tomorrow morning pop this back open and scribble down some of these artists i'm reading about that i don't know because you'll see things like recommended if you like you're like oh yes. i like all those bands i bet i like that i, I need to, yeah. to stream that tomorrow yeah. uh blast from the past recommended if you like you know where i got that from no. um the r r whatever that R I Y L. yeah that was from do you remember tower records magazine i remember the magazine that the, the, the magazine they used to have in in um in tower records uh what was it called but the free magazine you get as you right. walk in or out. Um, that was the first time I ever heard that saw that acronym recommended if you like. And for probably the first couple of months of avidly going to Tower, I'm like, what does that even mean? And then somebody pointed out, like, no, this is them telling you, hey, if you like Matthew Sweet, here's a list of other people that you know you should check out. I'm like, oh, that's perfect. That's I like one. when record stores do that too. Reckless, yes, does yes. that. And if you like shellac and no, whatever. I, yeah, I used All to right. get a, I used to get a kick out of uh, with Reckless. I used to get a kick out of looking at the uh, at the um, descriptions on you know uh, LPs or uh, CDs or whatever. And you know, I'm 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 narcissistic enough to admit that whenever someone I look at you know the punk section and somebody like, oh, if you like 88 Fingers, Louis, check these guys out. I'm like, All right. <laughs> Well, I do was, like 88 fingers, yeah, Louis. But I, it just so happens. Uh, <laughs> I, have a, I have a vested knowledge in that band. Let me see uh, what else. What else is going? It's on? amazing. So let's start. I, I know something on your list is uh, a band you and I both talked to on this podcast. Oh yes, very recently. Uh, the uh, the fine gentleman of Shades Apart. 
of, uh, of, of New Jersey. So Shades Apart, and you can go back and listen to the episode. They're, they're awesome. Um, just great dudes. And they basically went away for a long time. Yeah. And then they came back. And this album's great. What, what do you like about it? Uh, well, the, the, the name of the album is uh, Eternal Echo. And it's their, their first album in, I think they said, 19 years, um, which I can appreciate because 88's last record was our first one in 19 years. Yes. Um, uh, I, I loved it. And I, I, I was privy to a couple of the um, demo versions I got to, I got to hear um, in the preceding months. Um, I, what I loved the most about it is it's the perfect, it's the perfect mix of what they were doing before they signed to a major label leading into what they were working on as a major label band without, without, without getting super radio friendly. I mean, there's definitely some super poppy. For sure. Songs on there, yeah. They're, they're good with melody. Yes. They know <laughs> Uh, they certainly know their way around a hook, um, but this definitely has the stamp of, and, and they talked about this in the interview. It's got the stamp of of uh, of, of the guys in the blasting room. You know, the, their their relationship with the guys in in the Descendants go back a long time, and it was nice to kind of hear uh, uh, hear hear the Descendants producer stamp on, on on these new songs. But these new songs are again working on your first music in nearly twenty years, like. There's that fine line between, oh, we can't we can't lose, you know, our signature sound. Uh, so do you risk writing just a bunch of stuff like it's 1999 all over again? No, you've got to. Well, as someone who's been there, okay. wouldn't the attitude be more more like, well, what do we have to lose? Who gives a shit? Like we've gone away for so long, let's just make this what we exactly. want it to be. Exactly, and that's yeah, and I think, and you could tell, you could tell there's definitely there's definitely some songs on Eternal Echo that are like, okay, this. This definitely could have been on seeing things or save it or okay this this definitely could have been out on um at sonic boom um but they're just they're the melodies are there i uh i didn't get a chance to gush too much about them uh because ed what ed, ed their drummer wasn't on the part, part of the interview but his drumming is just phenomenal like he he comes from the school i, I believe he comes from the school of Stuart copeland where like you could tell there's there there is there is an anchor in this band, and that anchor is that 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 damn drummer was is good, and his and his drumming on Eternal Echo is is second to none. So again, we go deep into the Eternal Echo album by Shades Apart in an earlier episode from like a month or two ago. I lose track of the numbering at this point. If you had like, told me, if you had told me back in March I'd be doing like 150 of these from home, I, I wouldn't. I thought I thought by May I'm out. Yeah, in a couple couple months of doing this. Uh, Doing this from the laptop, that'll be fine. Yeah, I, I just, I literally, I'm spending like 12 hours a day in front of this computer now. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying, dude. By the time I get to Friday, I'm like, I just, I need things to be easy. I'm done. I'm toast. I, I have nothing, nothing left to offer the world. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, yeah, the 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 uh, that that shades apart record. I have to say, uh, that record since it's come out, and it's been, I think, two months that it's been out, maybe a little bit shorter. Um, I, I don't go more than two days without listening to it. I mean, it's, it's those songs when I, when I, when I, when I heard them the first time all the way through in the, in the, in the album sequence, um, there were songs that immediately, there were melodies in that, that, that immediately uh, entered my head and haven't left. And that's, you can't ask for a better album than that. So for further reference, we talked to the Shades Apart guys in episode 447. Oh, yeah. Ooh, this is oh. episode 466. That right there is Dennis Buckley, and we're talking music curation. If you're a fan of Smashing Pumpkins, and so many are, you'll be happy to know that the Pumpkins have new music out right now. You'll be happier to know there's a band that sounds like classic Gish and Siamese Dream era Pumpkins with new music out. Talk, talk to me about Narrowhead. Narrowhead was a uh, was a band um, that um, my buddy Dave, who who's a uh, 88's. Uh, Idiots, roadie and in, 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 in merch guy. What up, Dave? Uh, he he loves to um, send me. We go. We we send each other music recommendations back and forth. And I need a roadie and merch guy to do that I, with. I, he's perfect. Well, he, you know, he's 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 a uh, he's a guy that's he, that's a guy you should probably have on the podcast actually. Uh, but that's a that's a conversation for another time. Uh, he he him and I uh, quickly bonded over a, a mutual appreciation of similar similar music and it's funny sometimes he'll he'll send me five or six 
album recommendations in a day and I just get overwhelmed. I'm like, all right, dude, you know, thanks for the recommendation. Give, give the old thumbs up emoji or whatever. And then, and then I forget about it. Yeah. I'm like, I, I can't, I can't keep up with this. Um, but he happened to catch me, I don't know, catch me at a, at a, some, when I had some, some, uh, some free time and I'm like, all right, Narrowhead. He's like, oh, dude, this is right up your alley, right, right in your wheelhouse, but however he said it. And I'm like, all right, Narrowhead. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll check one song out. And it was, um, I can't think of the song title, but um, the name of the album is 12th House Rock. And uh, from the first song that he recommended to me, my, my, my mouth just fucking dropped. I mean, it was like, like I'm, in, in, in my head, I'm like, these guys are so good. And I guarantee they're, they're probably 22 years old. Right. These, are, these, are not, these are not, you know, these guys are, did not, you know, when, when, when they haven't grown up with a smashing blender, you know what I mean? Like they haven't, these, these guys uh, have enough of their own flair um, that they're not, um, you could tell they were not born and raised in the nineties. They, they right. probably came a little bit later. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's if somebody decided if, if, if uh, Siamese dream didn't come out in 1993 three. Um, and it came out in, in 2020 instead with, you know, with maybe the band members with more hair and, and um, in maybe a little more uh, grounded uh, for lack of a better word. Uh, they, it's, it's, it's just phenomenal. They, they, it's sludgy. It's yeah. heavy in parts. I mean, there are times when I'm listening, I'm like, Oh, that sounds like an Alice in Chains riff or yes. that sounds a lot like the Deftones. There's a song in there called hard to swallow, which feels more Deftonesy mm-hmm. mm-hmm. to me. Yeah. They, 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 the, the guitar song, the, the tones they have on, 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 on their guitars on this record are amazing. And, you know, I go through, I'm, I, I, I'm lazy enough and I cheat enough that I'll, Primarily, we'll use Spotify, which I know is the bane of musicians. But I'm. Well, wait. Didn't Eighty Eight Fingers Louis get rich from putting their songs on Spotify? Oh yeah, yeah. We we our last royalty check just on Spotify alone, um, I was able to buy a um, some nail clippers. Fantastic. I, I tell yeah. bands all the time: if you want to yeah. make it, make sure your music's on Spotify. 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 Mm-hmm. Like, otherwise, you're you know, you're, you're you're doing yourself a disservice. But yeah, so I, I'll thumb through stuff on. Uh, on Spotify, so you know, I was such I was so floored by this Narrowhead record that um, I decided to see what else they had, and they have this other record that had come out I think three or four years uh, prior, and um, it's it's a little leaner, but it's just as just as indebted to the to the '90s sound. It's uh, yeah, it's really it's 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 something else. I can't uh, that is that's probably going to go down. I mean, we're, what are we in October now? I think I could safely say this is going to probably come down as the uh, surprise album of the year for me. Like I just, just coming out of nowhere. It's worth noting if you're watching or listening to this on Friday, October 2nd, or if you prefer October 2nd, <laughs> all the albums we're talking about are on Bandcamp, and today is Bandcamp day. So if you buy something from an artist today, there's no commission or money taken off the top by Bandcamp. Everything you spend goes directly to the artist. So yeah. for instance, we mentioned Shades Apart. Uh, they are on Bandcamp, and that Bandcamp link is shadesapart.bandcamp. Um, Narrowhead, it's Narrowhead TX because they're from Texas, narrowheadtx.bandcamp.com. So if you're inspired to at least listen to them, maybe buy a single, maybe buy an album, maybe buy a t shirt, whatever, uh, this is a good way to do it. Bandcamp is a great way to support bands. Uh, in fact, my 88 Fingers Louis hoodie comes from Bandcamp. Well, there you go. That, yeah. that, that is a fresh. A fresh piece of wardrobe. I, I've never looked better than when I wear the eighty-eight hoodie. <laughs> it's true. Say I have a face for radio until they see me in an eighty-eight hoodie, and then they get it. Oh, right, exactly. So another band I, I didn't know of this band, and you recommended them uh, back in the nineties. I remember playing the Super Drag album, "Regretfully Yours," oh, to death. Yes, it, Super Drag to me was one of those bands from the nineties that just didn't get the shot. They got a shot, but there was something there that everyone missed. Yes, yes. And so, so fast forward to the present, there's a band called The Lees, L-E-E-S, of memory. Uh, this is the singer and guitarist from that band, mm-hmm. Super Drag. And I wouldn't have known they existed if not for you. Tell me about this band. Uh, so this band has been around, I want to say, since 2012. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's John Davis, the singer and guitar player for, um, 
from Super Drag, and uh, I'm struggling. There's a second gentleman, I believe, that played lead guitar in Super mm-hmm. Drag. He's the other member of that band. Um, yeah, been around since 2012. They start out as, uh, and I, and I uh, Super Drag to me um, was the perfect combination of power pop and like shoegaze because they definitely, mm-hmm. they were definitely uh, liberal with their use of the tremolo. Um, and the first Lees of Memory record that came out um, was leaned a little more to, on the shoegaze end, which was great. Mm-hmm. Um, that record's called Unnecess- Un- uh, Unnecessary Evil, I believe. Uh, but yeah, they, they were just an, 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 another band that came out at the perfect time for me. Um, after that, they kind of dipped in uh, um, more of a lo-fi turn. They, they, they decided to listen to their Beatles albums in mono uh, as, a, as opposed to uh, uh, high def, uh, which is great in, in, the, in the records that did um, uh, in the preceding years uh, sounded good, but it was always like it was missing something. I loved them, but it was still kind of missing something. And what it, honestly, I think what it was missing, it was just I need that high five back. So when I was hearing about the uh, uh, publicity leading up to um, to this record, uh, Moonshot, that come, came out uh, not long ago, um, someone said, oh, this is, someone described it as the record Super, Super Drag was supposed to make before they broke up. And then it was like, okay, you, you've got 100% of my attention. Yeah, sold. And, and I... It was one of those records again with Spotify. Uh, if you are a nightcrawler like I uh, unfortunately am, you could start hearing your new music at eleven o'clock p.m. on Thursday for the records that come out that come out on the Friday. So I remember I'm like, I'm going to give a couple of these new Lee's and Memory songs a listen before I go to bed at a reasonable hour. And uh, from eleven to probably one thirty that morning, I just kept listening to that record over and over and over again. And it's, it's the perfect, if you're a fan of super drag, you, you will, I guarantee you, you will, you will be in love with this record. It's, it's, this is probably going to end up being top three. I can't, I can't make any, any, any uh, uh, determinations with number one yet, but I can definitely, I'm definitely confident in saying that this is going to be in my top three of the year. And it, you are such a music nerd for saying something like that. Uh, well, I, I'm pretty sure this will make my top three of, of 2020. For those of us who are waiting for the Dennis Buckley top 10 list for 2020, it's such a, that's something music nerds talk about. They, like, they think about that. Like, let's see, major releases really stop first week of December. So that gives me three weeks to really come up with the perfect top 10 list so that it's mm-hmm. out before January 1st. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's my high fidelity moment, you know. Dude, you when guys, I sort of, yeah. When I started working at Q101 a million years ago, I did top 100 lists and Mm -hmm. I would create box sets for my friends. This is super fucking nerdy. I would burn CDs of 100 songs off my 100 favorite albums. And I'd I'd include like one to two sentence summaries of each album in liner notes that I packed with the CDs. I did that for, I think, two years. Oh, and then I realized this is a lot of work. What am I doing here? Uh, <laughs> but it, it is that it's that music fan slavishness to it's OCD. It's OCD. It there's is. no, it totally you, is. There, there's no, I used to, I, 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 I've dated girls over the years and even va- various family members have said, you're kind of OCD when it comes to music. And I hear OCD and I'm like, what's wrong with you? No, I don't knock on doors five times before I walk in. I don't have to wash my hands 17 times. Like, no, don't say that. But, I've grown to accept it over the past couple of years. Like I, I am who I am. See, I don't think I'm OCD. Although I, there are certain things I've done where I'm like, well, that could be OCD. There are times where I'll leave the kitchen after cooking and think, did I turn the burner off? <laughs> yeah. I, I've, that. Done, I've done that a couple of times. A couple of times I hadn't. So I was glad yeah. that I had that inclination to check. Oh God. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. Right. Well, to, I think when I first realized I had, a, 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 again, I'm, self-diagnosing myself as OCD. Uh, I've, I have probably five CDs to my name right now, but, but several years ago before I went digital, um, you know, I had, I had a thousand CDs, sure. if, if not more. Um, and uh, as someone that's moved around a lot in a very short amount of time, um, the bane of my existence was packing up my CDs. Absolutely. 
But the first fucking thing I did before Absolutely. I even before I even laid out any furniture, before I plugged in a freaking TV, before I double checked to make sure the refrigerator was running, uh, I set up my stereo. And, yeah. I, and I and I alphabetized all my all my freaking. This is why things. we're friends. I, I get you. <laughs> I understand you. Yeah, uh, I, I was talking to my my, my son um, about this a couple weekends ago, and uh, we were out with his girlfriend, I believe, and he was saying what a nut I am about music. And I said, "Do you remember when when I moved into the place uh, I talked about earlier at um, Montrose and Lowell? Um, when I moved in, I had." So my, 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 my CDs, how I had them laid out, all my shelving was different. I didn't have like uniform shelving. I had, here's an Ikea stand. Here's like a wire stand. Oh, see, that would make me nuts. I, I should have been more, <laughs> I should have looked at that as been like, that's not aesthetic at all. But I, uh, but I didn't. So I had different, various sizes of, of, uh, of CD towers. And there was one time, and, and this is, this is 20, 2006, 2007. So, you know, he's, He's 10, 11, 12 at the time. And he's, you know, sitting down uh, playing Xbox or something like that. And uh, he accidentally like threw an elbow and it like hit a CD tower and it fell down on him. And again, it was, it was, I mean, you know, he's sitting down. It wasn't like he was knocked out cold or anything, but, but, and I was, I was, you know, off in the kitchen or something. And I just hear the sound of the CDs crashing on top. And, and that's when he learned the awesome power of music. Yes, he did. And I, and it wasn't like a rush to him being like, Oh my God, buddy, you're okay. He was so annoyed that these CDs fell on top of him. And I rushed over. I didn't like hug him or like console him or anything. I'm like, all right, get up. I got to fix these CDs. <laughs> so I got that. CDs, CDs yeah, are basically are. useless now. They're, they're valueless. Yeah. It oh, may, because like, like you, I had, a lot of CDs and yeah. I, I still have a, a wall of the ones that I, I hold on to either for sentimental or maybe value value reasons, but sure. I, I, I don't even have a way to play them. Really. I have a disc adapter. I could plug into my computer monitor. I don't have a CD player anymore. Yeah. I have a CD drive on this, on this laptop. That's the only thing I could probably play them on. It, it, they feel like relics. Yeah, they really do. Um, but uh, where would we go? Where would we go? Oh, we're talking that? about the lees of memory. The oh, lees yeah. of memory, L E E S of memory. Bandcamp. Com. Let's move on yes. to another one of Dennis Buckley's picks. Uh, I, I think we can agree that Bob Mold is one of the great songwriters of our generation. Oh, it certainly is, with with without a doubt. And he uh, he put out a week ago today um, a very angry and beautiful album called Blue Hearts. Um, a very angry album. Rolling Stone. I love this line. Rolling Stone said, it often feels like Mold is in a losing battle with his guitar for who can sound angrier. Yeah, right. Exactly. And this is uh, uh, it, it's angry, it's ferocious, it's it's yeah. everything you want from a Bob Mold record. It is, it is. And it's in 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 it's to to the anybody out there that that hasn't heard the record yet. Um, the 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 wonderful thing about Bob Mold these past 10 years or so is that he's he's embraced his past. Um, whereas yep. whereas I know he was definitely spending some time running away from that for a, a, a good chunk of years there. Um, but these past decade, he's, he's, he's embraced his past, but it's been more of a, um, I felt it was more like, okay, if you're going to get like an aggressive power poppy uh, Bob mold, it's, it's going to be more on the sugar end of things. You're going to hear some songs that um, on these past records that sounded more like a sugar, you know, long lost sugar out songs, which, mm -hmm. which a hundred percent, I, I was on board with. I love that yeah, band very much. Love those sugar albums. But as as and as I would start to see Bob Mo, uh live more and more, he started introducing more old Husker Du songs into his set, which I thought was cool. But you thought you you got to think like he's not going to want to draw draw back from a sound from th you know 30, 35 years ago. That's just that's just crazy talk. Well, this record sounds <laughs> like a this record sounds like a long lost Husker Du. Album. And I, in many respects it does it, it opens with a, a very acoustic sounding song called heart yeah. on my sleeve mm -hmm. definitely a more quiet song for the album uh there's a song in there that to me sounds less like husker dude more like his solo stuff more like something off like early solo stuff i mean workbook yeah. or uh black sheets of rain a song yeah. called forecast of rain which i think is yes a standout on the album that, now that uh <clears throat> i will say that was one of one of three songs that he released prior to the album. And I think that was the second single that he released from it. And I remember, I remember hearing it on its own. I'm like, all right, 
I like this Bob Mould song a lot, but I don't love it. So it was kind of like, okay, all right, maybe, maybe, maybe Bob Mould isn't perfect, you know? <laughs> did, did it grow, grow any more? Sitting, sitting in the, in the context of the album, I, I love it. It just, it's st- standing, playing it by itself. Um, uh, just, it, 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 it eventually grew on me, but yeah, in the context of the album, I think it's great. But the song that follows Heart on My Sleeve, that second song, uh, Next Generation, that is probably now, now it's probably five Bob Mould solo songs that I've heard over the past decade where on first, and I, and I, I, am, I am not exaggerating at all when I say this, when that song first kicked in, you know, I listen to everything in, 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 in earbuds. I haven't, uh, I don't listen to really anything in out, 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 um, external speakers. So I've got, I've got my earbuds in and um, Next Generation kicks in. And I audibly said, and this is, like I said, five Bob Mould songs now over, over the decade, where I said, what the fuck? What the fuck? This is so good. And I was, you know, not a drop of alcohol yeah. in me. I was, I, was, I was sober as a church mouse, um, but just completely just completely floored by by this uh, by this and then having having that go into a uh, american crisis like you're not going you're not, you're not going to find two two angrier songs on that on that album two angry and catchy songs on an album uh well there are other great songs too like yes. uh, there's a song in there called leather dreams which is a very open relationship song yep from bob yep. uh and then at the end you know i mentioned at the very beginning it starts with heart on my sleeve uh the album is bookended with another more down tempo song called the ocean mm-hmm. like it really it seems like a really thoughtfully arranged or sequenced yes album yes which um, to me is still an art form sequencing oh, yes. absolutely it, uh and what when i what i love this the sequencing of this album is is great um the bit of press i read about the album um the, the biggest takeaway i got was um blue is his favorite color he's also a democrat uh, Sugar's Copper Blue came out the year that Bill Clinton got elected. So he's basically <laughs> saying, if I name an album Blue Hearts, maybe we have a better chance of getting a Democrat back in the office, which I thought was the coolest fucking thing in the world. Like, all right, we're, we're, we're putting all our money on, on Bob Mould now. No, pre- no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. So last on your list, I, I saved this one. Or no, there's one. Hang on. There's one more to get to before that. Yep. Moving Targets. This is a band. Yes. I think like last really they put out an album kind of recently, but before that it had been decades, like since the early nineties. since yeah. they put anything out. Yeah. They had, they had, a, they had a, they, another band with a 20 year break. Uh, that was a band I got into. I never, I didn't, I didn't hear them in their, in their heyday. Um, I only got into them um, maybe, maybe five or six years ago. And it was literally, you know, uh, in their, in their heyday, their band from Boston um, in their heyday, they were on Tang records, I believe. Um, and some friends of mine out East, um, said, I can't believe, you know, oh, I know what it was, uh, friends of mine out East get, would, 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 would hear me talk about, you know, the, 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 uh, genius of Evan Dando and Lemonheads. And even on Evan's worst day is, you know, in my mind, Evan's worst day is better than a lot of bands. Uh, I, I've, I've seen you days. praise, I've seen you praise yes. Dando on multiple occasions online. Yes. He still hasn't answered my phone call, which is upsetting. Um, I have driven by his house a couple times. Uh, he is not. Um, he's not uh, opened up his window when I when I threw the rock out. But I'll work on that. But uh, yeah, I, I I've I've been a long time long time Lemonheads fan. And a friend of mine out east, or some friends of mine out east, said, uh, "You're not giving any love to the moving targets." I'm like, "Remind me who the moving targets are." <laughs> and someone's like, "Oh, you poser!" And it was literally like, "Okay." Get burning in water. Uh, it, it literally, someone said it was like straight out of, uh, oh god, that that early two thousands movie, where the shins would change your life. What the heck movie is that? It was Garden that Garden State? State. Garden State. Yeah. It was a Garden State moment where someone's like, uh, listen to burning wa- burning in water. It'll change your life. I'm like, all right. And I listened to it, and it, to me, and I and I this this could be blasphemous. To me, the moving targets sound like a perfect combination of. Um, of uh, early to mid period uh, Lemonheads and early to mid period Goo Goo Dolls. They have, they've, I, I know you're a fan of the early Goo Goo Dolls stuff yes. as well, like Superstar Car Wash era. Goo uh-huh. Goo Dolls. Hold, hold me up, yeah, yeah, that 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 era. Um, and so, uh, yeah, they, so they took 
they took the better part of 20 years off. I believe uh, Kenny Chambers is the only, I think he's the sole original guy left. Um, but he, um, he reactivated the band um, a few years ago and they, they put out one record and I'm drawing a blank on the name. Um, and then they very quickly followed up with this, with this humbucker album. And, and this um, was crowdfunded too. Crowdfunded. Yeah. They did the uh, uh, pledge, pl not pledge, um, go fund me. Mm -hmm. Or Kickstarter um, or one of those things. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. of those. Uh, yeah. Crowdfunded. And it's a, uh, it's a very, very catchy album. It, 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 Another, it, it's, it, again, uh, it's a band that sounds like they never broke up. It sounds like, you know, ten, sounds like 10 years was 10 months. Well, I think we're seeing with your band, with Shades Apart and this band, when you don't have to prove anything, right. the, the pressure's off and you can just create for creation's sake. You can do yeah. your thing with it. With, you know, you're not doing it to appease anybody other than right. your own artistic needs. Yeah, if you can, if you can go back, and I, I don't know how often... The Shades Apart guys or the Moving Target guys do this, but if you can go back and and and, and put on one of your records, which I which I I, I do on occasion, uh, and and not cringe, you know, there's 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 eighty eight uh, songs and eighty eight uh, products that we put out over the years that I'll be happy to never listen to again, just because sure. of the conditions involved with the recording or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think that's the ultimate test. If you if you can listen to the record you just put out and, and, and with, you know, a few minor squibbles, if you can generally say you are 90, 85 to 90% satisfied with the record you put out, then, then, you know, if everybody, if everybody else likes it, that's even, you know, that's icing on the cake. I think what you're saying and describing resonates with anyone who creates stuff yeah. for a living or a hobby. I, I, as you were saying that, I'm like, God, I can't listen to anything I did on the radio. 15, 20, 25 years ago. Like I, I, I cringe yeah. listening to myself. And I think whether it's, you know, a writer or a painter or a musician, it's hard sometimes to look back on that stuff and not hear the flaws or hear yeah. the compromises right. that are, that are in that product. Yeah. It's a, it's, it could be a struggle. And, and I, and I, and I, um, it's a, Yeah. It, it can be rough, but it, it could it could definitely pay off in, in dividends too, which which these which is which is new records by Shades and and uh, and the Moving Targets have done. Um, I I real quick going back to the Bob Mold record, uh, he actually wrote that saying I wrote that record for the fr this is the first record he wrote since Sugar's Copper Blue, where he's like, this album is going to kick so much ass live, and of oh. course he he puts this record out and it, it you know for a fact it's going to kick ass live, but when the fuck are we going to get to see it live? Right. You know. So moving targets, if you're looking for them on Bandcamp, this is a little trickier. It's dead, bro dead broke records, but records is R-E-K-E-R-D-S. They're making this a, a motherfucker to find on Bandcamp, but it's there. <laughs> dead broke records. Uh, dead broke records dot com. Uh, or sorry, dead broke records. R-E-K-E-R-D-S dot Bandcamp dot com dot or slash album slash humbucker. I all, all musicians who are starting a new band, I, I think an important thing to consider when naming your band is how Googleable are you going yeah. to be? Yeah. How well, easy are you? I, and this is legit, whether it's you know being sought for on you know, Facebook or Instagram or on Google, how findable are you based on your name? Because yeah. if you have a really common word or two in your name, good luck. You're, you're page three. Oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You go to, you do that band camp and you're like, oh, yeah, I want to look for moving targets. You'll get moving sidewalks you'll get yes. the move you'll get moving in stereo you'll get a whole bunch of stuff um, any more classic rock references you want to throw my way <laughs> oh wait i forgot i'm supposed to talk about punk rock never mind uh anarchy in the uk dot com <laughs> there it is now i know uh, you're punk yeah uh, i will say this dead broke records is uh, a label uh run in um new york i believe long island um, by uh, my good buddy Mike Bruno from Iron Sheik. Um, he is a, uh, a gentleman and a scholar with uh, an immensely awesome taste in music. So he, he picked up the, uh, uh, he picked up the reins, so to speak. He took the reins uh, and um, uh, was, was awesome enough to put out this record and the last Moving Targets record. So kudos to Mr. Bruno. 
So if you're just joining us on Facebook or for some reason you're listening to the podcast and you decided to fast forward 40 minutes, uh, that's Dennis Buckley from 88 Fingers Louie. That'd be weird. Uh, that's Dennis Buckley from 88 Fingers Louie. We're not talking about his band, really, tonight. We're talking about new music. Dennis is a, a rabid consumer devourer of new music as it comes out. He also has a, a vast knowledge of music history. And I thought it'd be great to have him on tonight to talk about What's floating out there? What new releases are there? Because it's been my contention, and I strongly believe it, there aren't enough curators to lean on to help us discover new music. So tonight's all about music discovery, which brings me to bestowing upon you the high honor of being my friend of the week. You're a friend of the week for introducing me to a band I wish I'd heard of already, but I'm, I'm going to be playing catch up now. Uh, apparently, this is a thing. I should have been on board with this band a long time ago. Idols from the UK. Oh. The new album is Ultra Mono. I listened to this before we started talking. Uh, this this scratches every itch I have musically. I, I'm I'm that guy who, through the '90s especially, was listening to the Jesus Lizard, was listening to the Fall. Yes. I love that kind of angular post-punk raw sound, and that yeah. this band hits all those notes. When when you uh, when I when I came up with a list of of stuff I wanted to albums I wanted to talk about. And you uh, sent me a side message. And you're like, "Hey, uh, send me send me some send me the album that you're talking to talk about. I want to give a you know give a couple listens so we can we could both talk about it." I remember thinking, "Oh, he is going to love this Idols record." With you know, just just I, I just had a hunch, and I didn't want to. I purposely didn't want to like over promote him. Yeah, I was just like, you know what? You know how I feel about uh, how I feel about um, Bob Mould, and I'll let I'll let the rest of the albums uh, speak for itself. But literally, as I added. Uh, idols to the list. I'm like, oh, I, I, I'll even go so far as to say, I expected, and I'm glad I wasn't disappointed. I expected you to reach out to me prior to the, the podcast and be like, <laughs> you motherfucker, this album is awesome. That's pretty much what I texted you. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. That, this is this this band is. I I don't know much about their backstory. Um, like I was telling you, um, off air, off air. <laughs> prior to recording dude this is the um, new radio it was off it air is, it was off air uh, -huh. uh uh i was introduced to them um uh through a single that came out uh um a few years ago a single called mother and the chorus was literally mother mother fucker and it was it was um and i don't even remember i don't even know if somebody explained i don't even think they gave me a description of the band they're like they're like hey we know what what uh what music you're into, um, this is something that, that uh, you'll, this is something we, we, you, we, you're guaranteed to love or, or your money back basically is what it was. And I remember not only was I floored on that song, I think I even texted my, my kid who eats, eats the same type of uh, angular, angular music up himself. Um, I sent him the song he's like, what? what did I just listen to? The song is amazing. Uh, but it was literally, and then they haven't really changed their sound that much. I mean, it's probably gotten bigger and more better production as, as the, you know, the label got bigger. Um, they really haven't changed their sound, but it's, it's, and I knew I was going to like it. I just didn't know that it was going to be like a, what the fuck? This is instant, instant connection with me. Yeah. Yeah. Start to finish on this album. Like, this is an album I would hold up to say, if you want to know what kind of music I really like, it's this. Yeah. yeah. And because how, it, in the nineties, you know, I, I was listening to goat and liar and yeah. down from the Jesus lizard. I mean, I, Dwayne Dennison's guitar, David Yao, that ferocious man monster <laughs> on microphone. I mean, just, yep. God, I love that shit. I just, I, and, and it was funny before, uh, before we talked about the album, I, I, I don't think I knew in my head, I'm like, okay, this is the perfect cross between Jesus lizard and the fall. But I wasn't sure if I said it was one of those like, comparisons that I made in my head but if I said it out loud I'm like okay how pretentious am I going to sound if I say that and, and you're spot on though that is exactly and, and, it and how wrong would it could I possibly be but I'm glad I'm, I'm glad that is 100% my first impression yeah I, I, yeah. and I love both those bands yeah. so th this is yeah it's, it's just awesome and I, I owe you a debt of thanks well, for I'm, bringing I'm, it bring it to my life I'm glad to pass on the love because uh as, I, as we just talked about, there's, they probably don't need our push because they're big enough. But to anybody out there that's, that's got an uh, inkling to check out new music, like that, that is definitely, if, if someone said, hey, 
I'm tired of my record collection. Give me one record right now. I'd have to listen to. I would one. I wouldn't hesitate to say Ultramano. That would probably be my pick. Now I know you're not a fan. I'm assuming you're not a fan, uh, but I swear the new Marilyn Manson album is fucking fantastic. Uh, you're right. I'm not. Um, but uh, I have had enough people, you included, have told me, "You're you're did Shooter Jennings yeah. record this record." Yeah. So, so it's a country record. No, it, yeah. it's it has moments that hints of it. Uh, it's glam. It's it's dark. It's 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 all over the place. But it, it's like a culmination of everything he's done up until now, but done really well this time around. Okay. Now, see, he he is he or they he uh, is somebody that just just on 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 um, uh, uh, just visual appearance alone. I'm like, eh, all right, I. I'm old enough to remember, uh, you know, the sh- the shock schlock whatever of like KMFDM and like early Sorry. Nine Inch Nails and you know uh, uh, being goofy for goofy's sake. Like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my put a leather dress on. I'm gonna really show these people up. Like, see, I I, I kind of reject that. That, that sounds very '90s. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I'm all for an, an artist putting on a show. But what I'm saying is, but when he when Man- Manson first came out. That was my opinion of him. I'm like, oh well, he's got, and I, I'm a huge Nine Inch Nails fan, but I'm like, okay, well, clearly, I just didn't see the appeal in it. And then somebody, a, a good friend of mine, pointed out uh, several years ago, um, if 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 you were to hear Marilyn Manson and not being told it was Marilyn Manson, do you think your opinion would change? And I said, I I don't know. I think I know. I you know, music snob in me is like, oh. I know enough about the way Marilyn Manson's voice sounds that I could pick his and even shit out in a in a in a um, mixtape or whatever. And there was a song, not that long. Oh, I can't. I'm terrible with song titles. A song from an album that's maybe been out that that maybe came out 10, 10 or twelve years ago. And it was like, oh, okay, this is this is some like cool death rock. Like this reminds me of uh, you know. Um, this reminds me of me uh, in my black troll neck in, in patent leather shoes in 1989 or 90. I can I can get into this. That was a phase you were in. I, I can't visualize that. Oh, I have pictures to prove it. All right. <laughs> for for eighty eight dollars, uh, I will I will I will send you the picture. No, uh, uh, whatever the song was, I, I I told my friend I'm like, wow, what, this this uh the song you just the song link you just sent me this this fucking song is great. And he literally pulled a um. A Nelson from The Simpsons. You went, ha, ha, you like this? You like Manson now? I'm like, okay, I guess I like a Manson song. But I'm in, I'm in actually intrigued enough with by by what you talked about, uh, how you described the record in a few other recommendations. That what you just described is like that urban legend where someone sends you a box of donuts and you think, wow, these donuts are delicious. Then <laughs> the next day you're sent a picture and all the donuts are wrapped around guys' cocks. <laughs> you ever hear that urban legend? No, and now the image is not going to leave my head. I'm not going to sleep okay. tonight. Enjoy your breakfast. But I, another thing that happens this time of year, I love re-releases and reissues. And yes, they always come out in the fall. It's always been the thing the record industry has done. It's like money in the bank, yeah. Re- repurpose or repackage things you know people already like. Um, the demos for PJ Harvey's To Bring You My Love album have been released. Which oh, they me- have. I, okay, I got to get Oh my God, I, I love PJ Harvey. There she is. Um, oh. That album was just a big part of the 90s for me and just hearing the demos pretty fit pretty true to what ended up on the on the album but mm-hmm. such great songs and hearing them like that i love uh, i had a guest on my show recently uh juanita stein who was the front woman for the howling bells oh i remember that. i think you would dig her okay. because the music's like hazy americana okay kind of like stuff. Ma- mazy starish maybe a little little grittier okay but I, I think that might be up your alley. You might dig that. And I'm I'm digging the new Thurston Moore album, and I'm not a Sonic Youth fan. Okay. Uh, I'm glad that you brought that album up. I'm a huge Sonic Youth fan, but I've long said, and this is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adjust my music nerd hat here. Uh, <laughs> um, I have long believed that, um, I'm, I'm going to fuck up this phrasing. Uh, the members of Sonic Youth are not, What's the, what's the phrase? They're, they're not equal to the sum of their parts. Basically, Some of the parts I'm, are not equal to the whole or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
that grand gesture I was going to make clearly backfired. But uh, the point I was trying to make is, for me, with the exception of uh, of their other guitar player, Lee Ronaldo, I have not liked any any Sonic Youth solo member stuff. So I approached uh, this new uh, Thurston Moore record with caution. I heard that song, uh, Hashish, Hashish, yeah. Hashish, yeah. Uh, I heard that a couple of weeks ago. Again, just someone said, hey, there's a new Sonic Youth, there's a new Thurston Moore song out. It's got um, Steve Shelley, their drummer, and it's got the bass player from My Bloody Valentine. They're all in this band now. I'm like, okay, well, that's worth enough checking out. And I really like that that song. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna um, definitely at least give this Thurston Moore record at least one listen. And I think I popped that on um, just a couple of days ago. And I'm like, yeah, all right, I'm on, I'm on board. This is good. Yeah. It, more conventional. Yes. Yes. And that was, that was my problem with a lot of their, so a lot of their solo stuff was like, okay, well, we're on a major label now. We've got to kind of have to, we kind of have to like uh, compartmentalize our, our sound. Let's just make the most arty, in my opinion, pretentious. Song. Yes. I, by the time I got to washing machine, I'm like, I'm out. I can't, I, I'm done trying. I, yeah. Yeah. I was good through goo. I'm out. Yeah. Dirt, dirty is my, uh, is my, is my favorite sound of youth record. I, I, I have so many awesome memories listening to that record. What, literally, literally walking around uh, Lincoln Park. I, I, I may, I may have been uh, medicated um, of, or, or on some sort of really? chemical. Were you sick? Yeah, I was. I was out in uh, cough syrup. Yeah, yeah. I had a really big, <laughs> terrible cough. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I like that record a lot. And I, and I, I think with you, I think I jumped off at Washing Machine, but then there are like two or three records leading leading up to their uh, their split were they, they were almost like they're <laughs> they sound like Sonic Youth if Eric and Kathy played them. Like they had like a they had like almost like a soft rock sound to them because. It was probably them being like, okay, we don't have to turn up the guitars all the way up. We could. Sonic Youth, like Eric and Kathy, would be like, have you had the hardest time getting the kids to school and having to do groceries the same morning? <laughs> Give us a call. Do you, do you want to hear uh, Seals and Crofts? Uh, they don't uh, play Seals and Crofts. Down, down to, um, they should play. You know what? That's why they're not on the air. Are they still on the air? Uh, Eric, Eric is still on the air. Okay, Eric. If Eric plays Seals and Croft, he could probably get um, Kathy back. In, in, in. Really, any of the yacht rock classics. If you wanted to do yeah. Thunder Island by Jay Ferguson, that'd be fine. Oh. Reminiscing by Little River Band, I think always, always timeless, always appropriate. If you ever want to have a yacht rock uh, podcast uh, to discuss the, the the power of yacht rock, I I could I could wrangle I can wrangle a few few other uh, punk rockers in the mix, and we could talk about the. The power of yacht rock because i i legitimately i don't know if i want so, this i'm just saying maybe it's time for me to start my own podcast it's time for, okay here's the thing it's time for everyone to start their own podcast <laughs> i i don't know why more people aren't i mean this is this is the time yeah i it, I, I i'm on a, i'm on a i'm on a work uh, a work loan computer and uh that's my excuse i could I, I could just as easily go out and get another laptop and get the software for it but uh, just so you know, you can record your voice on your phone these days. That's true. I could. This is the, people don't realize that the barrier for entry to podcasting is really low. I mean, people people view it as this arcane rules and and tricks you need to learn and master in order to get your stuff out there. It's not that hard. But the problem is, and this is where I get to blow a little smoke up your ass. Uh, they don't, and I, and I I'm a big podcast listener too. Um, there's so much poor quality sounding podcasts that are out now where literally, sure. you know, and, they, and I don't remember what the, or you might've even told me this. I don't know what the approval process is when you get it, when I want to put it through, you know, um, Apple music or whatever, whatever it is. I know there's some sort of process involved in that. Uh, the process is basically just a quick scan to make sure that you're not fraudulent or a Klansman. I mean, I think that's, oh, okay. that's all that the companies are looking for. I kind of wish they would they would have a um, they would have a rule as far as like quality because there's just just like a lot of records out there too. Like it's like there. saying I wish Bandcamp would would approve bands based on quality. Well, just, yeah, what I'm saying like even from like listening to okay, bringing it back to music from a mastering standpoint. Um, shout out to Bomb Shelter uh, Recording Studios who are also excel in mastering. Um, they. Uh, 
when you hear a poorly mastered uh, podcast, the, the level, you've got to like literally throw the volume up all the way on your damn phone yeah. just, to, just to hear it. And then, you know, that auto plays to your next podcast and all of a sudden it's like, blow your eardrums out. Um, that's been my problem with podcasts. And I figured with my luck, I'd end up being one of those poor sons of bitches that puts out something that, that has the dog whistle that only, uh, you know, only certain breeds of dogs can, can hear. The reality is a lot of podcasts that start don't make it past three or four months. People realize oh, there's some work involved and the financial reward isn't immediately there. But I will say if, if someone is interested in learning or just wants to know how to get get going, I, I said this at the very beginning of the pandemic. I, I thought that more people might be interested. I, I'm here to help. Like if someone has questions about podcasting, message me. If you want to know how to get an RSS feed, what kind of gear you need to start, I'm, I'm happy to share that info. I, it's my belief that the more people who do it, the better it is for all podcasters. It's just the, okay. the closer the medium becomes to being more widely accepted and legitimized. So I'm, yeah. I'm happy to help more cool. the merrier jump in all my right. pool. All right. <laughs> so to summarize, we talked about a lot of music tonight, all of which is available on Bandcamp. The Lees of Memory, L-E-E-S of Memory. That's the band we talked about with the former members of Super Drag. Mm -hmm. Shades Apart, former Carcon Carne guest, Eternal Echo is the new one from them. Yep. Narrowhead was the band we talked about that sounded like Siamese Dream era, Smashing Pumpkins, cool sludgy stuff. 12th House Rock is that album. Mm -hmm. The Immortal, the beloved Bob Mould. His new album is Blue Hearts. Fucking love Bob Mould. Uh, and the band, oh, we also talked about Moving Targets, Humbucker, mm -hmm. Moving Targets, also on Bandcamp. And then we just talked about Idols and the album Ultra Mono, which, oh man. Yeah, I, I, I have nothing else to say about that one. Great stuff. If, if anybody's listening to this uh, live right now, um, as soon as this podcast is done, not a minute before, but as soon as this podcast is done or the stream is done, um, listen to that record if you haven't heard it yet, because uh, it, it is it is the best, probably the best thing I've heard in a long time. And if you're listening live, it is a Friday night at 940 at night. Great time to pop that on. Yeah. What else are you going to do? literally nothing no <laughs> literally nothing <laughs> my plan for tonight is i'm going to watch the boys and go to sleep i'm going to wake up tomorrow and stay home and then sunday i'm going to stay home nice uh i watched the boys shortly before uh we connected you are in for a treat my friend are you caught up are you are this i'm caught up I, okay okay you are in for a treat okay every so, week there's every week there's at least one holy shit moment there are I'm not, I'm, I don't want to spoil it. There are definitely some holy shit moments. Like last week's, the, the holy shit moment came very early. This, this they make you wait. There's okay. th almost, almost, almost at the very end, but it's holy shit worthy for sure. Okay. All right. You are Dennis Buckley. You are a, a wonderful person. You're a friend, a friend of this show. Thank you for sharing your music excitement. I, there aren't enough of us out there. Thank you for sharing being excited. And, and, thank Thanks you for, for being, being a friend. With me. Yes. Yeah. Thank, thank you for your excitement. Your excitement is uh, is 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 catchy. Um, I have now caught your excitement. Um, I'm I'm I don't know what else I've caught tonight, but I've definitely caught some excitement. Fantastic! And again, if you if you're watching or listening on Friday night, Bandcamp Day is today, so you have a little time left. Everything you buy in Bandcamp goes directly to the artists, including 88, 88 Fingers Louie, if you want to support them, uh, which I recommend. Um, I, I, believe that, I believe that link is 88fingerslouie.bandcamp.com. Uh, there it is. But a great way to support artists. Every, every, no one's touring. No one's playing. So this is a great way to put some money in their pockets and reward yourself with some music or merch. I, I love Bandcamp Day. So, all treat right, yourself. Dennis, treat yes. yourself. Thank you, Dennis Buckley. Thanks, James. They were on this show back on April 14th, episode 339. So I had a great interview with those guys. I love them.